Peddling fake news to create anti-India rhetoric has been a norm for leftist portals since long. As if spreading dangerous lies such as lies about the security forces of India was not enough for the leftist portals, they have now stooped down to another level by linking suicides of students as their driving force to tarnish one of the most popular research institutes in India, the IISC. IISC's founding director C.V. Raman was a Nobel Prize winning physicist and there should be no debate regarding IISC's place in the national and global rankings. Leftist portals, however, continue their knack of tarnishing anything that is made in India. They are now shamelessly targeting the ISC in the desperate yet disgusting attempt to stay relevant. Hi and welcome. You are watching TFI English, the national socio-political analysis arm of the TFI Media Group. I'm your host Siddharth and in this video, I will tell you how the leftist portals have now stooped to a newer low by trying to tarnish ISC's image by shamelessly using the sensitive topic of suicide to peddle their anti-India narratives. Let's begin. Two students studying at India's premier Indian Institute of Science, Bengaluru, have committed suicide in the month of September. Rising tension, depression, and anxiety due to the COVID pandemic that has taken a toll on entire mankind have been termed as the major reasons behind the extreme step taken by these students. However, a section of media has taken it as an opportunity to target the institute, which has become a crown jewel of the Indian higher education setup. A major publication carried a feature-length report and painted the dystopian picture that the institute had been solely responsible for the death of the students. However, according to the senior police officer in charge of the zone under which ISC falls, the major cause of the deaths was personal. In our inquiries with the friends of the deceased, we found that the most determining cause is personal, a sense of personal failure. In a couple of cases, the deceased had mentioned in the suicide notes that the institution or faculty members should not be harassed over their decision. The officer further added, in our understanding of the cases so far, most of those who die by suicides are PhD scholars. Many come from difficult family backgrounds. The mental health of students cannot be ignored and those who have managed to enroll themselves in top institutes like the IASC must be strong mentally as well. However, sometimes the situations can appear overpowering, one can feel helpless, and even the brightest of minds in the heat of the moment can take an extreme step. It is unfortunate, but it happens. A number of students across the country committed suicide in the aftermath of the NEET exam after they could not perform according to the benchmark they had set for themselves. Maybe in the future, our academic structure might evolve to an extent that marks and grades are not the only viable metrics to gauge a person's potential. However, until that happens, students have to toughen themselves up. And once again, to reiterate, that is not to undermine anyone's mental health being. Quoting an anonymous student, the publication stated that last year at the peak of the pandemic, students were not allowed to talk to their peers on the open grounds and that living in isolation took its toll on students' mental health. While it is understandable that isolation must have taken its toll, one also needs to comprehend that desperate measures were incorporated because none of us knew the extent of the destruction that the China virus was capable of inflicting. Indian Railways, which in its history of 167 years had never stopped ferrying passengers, had come to a halt last April. Such was the extent of the so-called draconian measures. However, with more than 65% of the country partially jabbed and 25% completely vaccinated, ISC has opened up as well and is allowing students to roam around freely. Attributing ISC as responsible for the death of the said students when it has actively formed a wellness center on the institute compounds and invited psychiatrists and counselors to guide the students is pure propaganda. Demonizing one of the best facilities in the country serves no purpose unless some vested interests are involved. Union Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan earlier this month released the National Institute Ranking Framework 2021. The ranking list witnessed the ISC being adjusted as the best research institute in the country, followed by IIT Madras and IIT Bombay at the second and third ranks respectively. Overall, ISC emerged as the second highest ranked institute in the country, followed by IIT Madras. ISC's founding director was a Nobel Prize winning physicist C.B. Raman, and there was no debate regarding ISC's place in the rankings. It had been coming for a long time. The institute earlier this year had been ranked the world's top research university for achieving a perfect score of 100 on 100 in the metric of citations per faculty indicator ahead of varsities like Princeton, 
Harvard, Guangzhou Institute of Science and Technology, Georgia Institute of Technology, and Caltech. As reported by TFI, a total of 71 Indian universities had made it to the Times Higher Education World University Rankings of 2022, which is up from 63 last year. While none of them managed to breach the top 300 barrier, but IASC, a regular in the list, managed to find itself in the 301 to 350 band for a third consecutive year. IASC is the crown jewel of the country and it has set new frontiers in the research-based education of the country. Trying to tarnish its image is just despicable.